Hey everyone, it's James here from the Dev Genie Academy, and welcome to this week's video. In this episode, we're going to be looking at spotlights. So, without further ado, let's begin. First of all, we'll want to create a spotlight class inside of our lighting package, and we'll also need an instance of point light inside of the spotlight package, just so we don't have to redeclare the same variables again. But in addition to that, we need a vector 3f of cone direction and a private float of a cutoff. So as usual, we can create a constructor with all three of the variables we've created. And then we can create a getters and setters for all three of the variables as well. But what we can also do here as well is we can create another constructor. And in this constructor, we can pass in another spotlight as the constructor variable. So we can then do this dot point light equals spotlight dot get point light. We can do this dot cone direction equals spotlight dot get cone direction. And just to mix things up, let's do a set cutoff to be spotlight dot get cutoff. And that should be everything that we need in the spotlight class. So we can close that down and move across to the shader manager. In the shader manager, as usual, we need to create a create spotlight uniform. Spotlight uniform, there we go. And of course that takes in a string of uniform name and throws an exception, just as we've done on all the other similar functions. So we need to create a point light uniform from this, which just passes the uniform name plus dot pl. And there we go. And we can create two more uniforms, which is uniform name dot cone direction and one for the cutoff as well. There, dot cutoff. There we go. So next up, we need to set the uniform. So we can create a public void set uniform. And again, that takes in a string of uniform name and a spotlight. That's it. And one of the three calls is set uniform of uniform name dot pl. And we pass in the parameter of spotlight dot get point light. And we can do that two more times. So set uniform of uniform name dot cone direction or cone dir. And spotlight. Oops. Spotlight dot come on. Cone direction. There we go. And the final one is uniform name dot cut off. Cut off. There we go. And it's finally just spotlight dot get cut off. And that's it all we need to do in the shader manager class. We are now done with the shader manager class. So we can close that down and move into the render manager class instead. And it's fairly straightforward in here. We just need to do two lines. It's uh, the first one in the render method shader dot set uniform. And that's going to be a uniform name of spotlight. And then we pass spotlight into there as a variable. That does mean we need to add a new parameter to the render method, which is the spotlight itself. And finally, we need to do in the init method shader.create spotlight uniform and then pass the spotlight in there as the uniform name. So that's us now done with the render management class. So we can now move into the test game class. And as last week we did, we created a point light. We need to do the same thing with a spotlight. So we can say spotlight of spotlight. And in the init method, just after we've already created the spotlight, so we'll just comment that out as point light, and whoops, and we can set that as the directional light there. So in between those two, we can create a spotlight. There we go. And then we can create a vector 3f of cone direction, or cone dir. That will then equal a new vector 3f of 0, 0, 001. We also need to create our float of cutoff, which is going to be math.cosine of math dot to radiance of 180. We need to cast that to a float and we can now create our spotlight so that spotlight equals a new spotlight and inside of there we can create a new point light and we can use the light color that we've used before so light color and we can make a new vector 3f of 0 0 and 1f. We also need to have the light intensity light intensity there we go and the constant linear and exponent will be zero zero one 
And finally, all we need to do now is add in our comb direction and our cutoff. And that is the instance of the spotlight created. You may want to play around with the position values here because currently it's going to be right on top of the current point light we've already got in the scene. And in the render method, we just need to add the spotlight as the extra parameter we added. In the input method, what we can do is create a float of light pos, and this will equal the spotlight.getPointLight.getPosition of Z. And then we can also capture a key pressed command here. So if the window is key pressed of the key N, let me just fix that, there we go. So if N is pressed, we can then do spotlight dot get point light dot get color of z and that's going to equal light plus plus zero one f and we can copy that and paste it in and we can change the key from n to m and we can then negative that by zero point one f moving on to the fragment shader we need to create a new structure for the spotlight so it's a fairly simple one this time it's a struct of spotlight and it's got the three parameters. It obviously needs an instance of the point light, which is PL. It needs a vector three of cone de, and it needs a float of cutoff. Once we've got those in there, we can create that uniform of the spotlight. So uniform spotlight of spotlight. And we also need to create a new function. So just underneath calc point light, we can create a vector four of calc spotlight. And that takes inner parameter of spotlight of light, a vector 3 of position, and a vector 3 of normal. And of course we need to create a few local variables, so a vector 3 of light direction. And that's going to equal, actually let me change that to light de, there we go, to keep it consistent. So light de equals light dot point light dot position, and that needs to negative the position that we passed in. And we can create another vector 3 of 2 light de, and that's going to equal normalize of the light direction. Or light de. And another vector 3 that we need is a from light direction, which is just equal to negative of the to light direction. So an extra thing that we need here is we need float of spot alpha. And that's going to be, be the dot notation of from light direction and normalized value of the light dot cone direction. So we can create another vector four here of color, which is just going to be empty, defaulted to zero for now. And if the spot alpha is greater than the light cutoff, that means we need to add color to that scene. So the color is then equal to calc point light. So color equals calc point light. And we pass in the light dot point, point light, so light dot PL, the position, and finally the normal. And the color itself needs to be multiplied by 1.0. That needs to be negative of 1.0, negative the spot alpha. And that needs to be divided by 1.0, negative the light dot cutoff. There we go. And then all we need to do now is just do the return color. There is one final thing that we need to do in the fragment shader, and that's in the main method, we need to do the diffused specular comp. That needs to be plus equal to the calc spotlight, and we pass in the spotlight itself, the frag position, and also the frag normal. And then that's already added into the equation for the frag color itself. So if we go to run that now, we can see that if we press the keys, the color is slightly changing, it's somewhat noticeable. But what we can do is we can go back into our test game and change get color to get position. And we do that for both key combinations. Get position, there we go. And now if we run that again, we can see that we can move the spotlight closer or further away from the block, increasing its intensity. Here's a little challenge for you for next week. See if you can get the spotlight to move on the scene. So until next time, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next week.